everyone. Thanks for joining us on the show. We hope your weekend is coming on well. Welcome to Live from Abuja. And we are reaching you from Nigeria's seat of power. I am Adimola Lawrence. On the show today, we have exciting compilations for your viewing pleasure. So sit back as we take you through this worthwhile experience. I am Habib Alawal. I think the week uh, is been a very interesting one, starting from the uh, student loan, then the increment in... <laughs> In power, I think Nigerians are not just finding it funny this time. I around. think the the increment in uh, tariff yeah. um, overshadowed um, the student the loan bill that was signed into into law, given the fact that um, a lot of things will be affected. Not only, and this was occasioned by the hike in um, gas price. So we <laughs> hope we hope um, th um, uh, um, certain um, steps will be taken to ameliorate um, these. Um, issues for people we hope so and all of these things is what we're going to be talking about on the show but let's begin with some cherry news uh coming out of africa uh most populous black nation where students can now have access to loans to further their tertiary education this is happening at the time president bola Tinumbo signed the longer with a student loan bill into law both chambers of the national assembly committee on tertiary institutions and tet fund had earlier considered the bill before its passage. President Tinubu is confident that with this new law, no Nigerian, regardless of their background, will be excluded from obtaining quality education. So this next piece tells us more on the steps to be taken before, assess before assessing the student loan. It is not a new practice all over the world as government provides loans for students to further their education. Nigerian joins the League of Countries that seeks to reduce the burden on students. According to research, about 70% of Nigerian's population is under 30 and 42% is under the age of 15. Nigerian has 272 universities, 152 colleges of education and 159 polytechnics. The signing of the new law is in fulfillment of the President Bola Tinubu's flagship policy to boost the prospect of Nigerian youth to acquire tertiary education in the country. I determined to ensure education is given the proper attention necessary for the country, including skill development programs. The part to determine the modalities to assessing the loan, class of students who are qualified for the loan, and the amounts to be given to beneficiaries and left to the board of directors who are yet to be appointed by the presidents. Unlike the Students' Loan Act 2023, the new act removes family income threshold so Nigerian students can apply for these loans and accept responsibility for payments according to the fund's guidelines. Applicants to the fund may apply for loans to cover tuition and other fee payable to the school and maintenance allowance payable to the students. Payments of the fund shall begin as soon as the beneficiaries become employed in any capacity. You see, the payment plan is uh, two years and it will be 10 years, 10% 10 of their monthly enrollment that will be done for those who are working. For those who are not working, they must inform the board that, look, we have benefited from this loan and we are not working right now. So we apply for extension of a period to allow us to commence the payment of the loan. Where such extension is cannot also pay, then you are left with the option to go and swat and affidavit a bit on why you cannot be able to pay and it should be well for you. With this, there is hope for millions of Nigerian students who may have become school dropouts due to their inability to afford their tuition. Okay. Heli Osamedei Kings, TVC News, Abuja. And President Tunumbo initially signed the student loan bill into law back in June 2023 to offer financial assistance to Nigerian students in tertiary institutions. While the bill was signed earlier, its implementation has faced delay due to various issues in during its rollout. The bill also provides the framework for equal access to interest-free loans for all students seeking to study in public institutions of higher learning in Nigeria, 
for the payment of tuition fees and other levies. Earlier, we had a chat with the Minister of State Education, Honorable Yusuf Sununu, where he puts all of these issues in clearer perspective. After assenting to the bill, Mr. President made it that clear that as far as the government is concerned, under his leadership, no child should be left out of school because of the poverty, irrespective of his state of origin, religious or racial. As far as he is a Nigerian, that right to access to higher education will be given to him in such a way that he can remember that as Nigerian, the country has done something else for me and I need to pay back to Nigeria. So we understand Nigeria and this Now, we look at the objective of the bill before coming to even the access. What is the objective? The objective is to make education very accessible and affordable to individuals so that there is not anybody who is over discrimination because of economic status of his or her family. And that should be open to every Nigerian. There are qualifications to access the loan. And one of the major qualifications is, first of all, one must be a Nigerian who has secured admission into state or federal government-owned tertiary institutions or skill registered skill acquisition centers owned by even private organizations. It means by the provision of the act right now, the beneficiaries are those in public institutions, either federal or state. And then it also goes to say that government will now register institution, enter, entrepreneurship institutions, you can even call them IEIs, so that anybody desirous of ski can go and key into those registered institutions, get their admission for a number of years or months he's going to study, and then access the loan so that he can continue to pursue his skill acquisition. The importance of this is that we are now having so many out-of-school children. This out-of-school, uh, out well, let me limit it to out-of-school. You can have children, you can also have adults. For children, you know what to take them out there, I will give them the basic. We have adults who will have to give them basic educations. And then given the education, we must also arm them with skills. So they can go and register in any of those institutions and then get their addition. Because it's a skill addition. You may also say that, yes, it's an, uh, I am a polytechnic student. I'm interested in becoming a mechanical engineer. The government has provided all the opportunities for you to have the theoretical knowledge. You can access the loan and register with any of these skill entrepreneurship institution and then get a loan that you can do to pursue it. The previous act whether by omission or commission, is so restrictive in such a way that few students can access the loan. Restricting it to only those who have less than 500,000, those whose parents defaulted cannot uh, listen. You must have a, uh, a grantors who are directors, at least two. You understand the abilities who have university students and nobody in the whole village that is a director, they don't even have even a state civil servant of director level take care of having a federal director. So it's so restrictive. And people made so many cry. And President is somebody who is so passionate about Nigeria and monitoring and tracking events. And also in the eight point agenda of Mr. President, there is a big, bigger provision for the respect of rule of law. The only way that bill could have been, uh, act could have been operational is by circumventing some of the provision. And that's against the rule of law. People will challenge this thing. So Mr. President has to give it a second thought and 
because of the very good alignment between the executive and the National Assembly legislature, and everybody is convinced that the need of that law is and cannot be overemphasized. So an amendment was sent, and in the shortest possible time, it was passed. And because Mr. President is committed, instantly also he assented to the bill. So that now removes all the restri restrictions that we are addressing. And it now made the access for you. The major qualification is what I've mentioned. Yes, up till now, if you have enjoyed it on your own personal ground and you refuse to get yourself to pay it back, then you cannot access it. I, I think it's very it's understandable. Here, yeah, you are the one causing the denial for yourself. But nobody is visiting the, you because of the fault of one's parent, which I think is an understandable issue. So the access is for you to get in public institution or any of the registered skill acquisition centers. If you think because of your parent has enough and then you don't want to, yes, it's good. So that you can allow the others who cannot listen to. And that's one good aspect of the act also. It provided for a collaboration. And you know that an individual who is rich enough, wealthy enough, can donate as gifts or as grant to the fund so that he can have so 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 number of people that can be enrolled and utilize that his fund to secure their knowledge. The payment plan is uh, two years and it will be 10 years, 10% 10 of their monthly enrollment that will be done for those who are working. For those who are not working, they must inform the board that look, we have benefited from this plan and we are not working right now. So we applied for extension of a period that allowed us to commence the payment of the loan. Where such extension is cannot also pay, then you are left with the option to go and swot an affidavit on why you cannot be able to pay and it should be well for you. That's provision for an affidavit. Then for those, the payment, if you are employed, then 10% of it will be deducted. And then the loan, the board, the fund, will have right to the organization you are employed. That so, so, so person is a beneficiary of student loan, and the payment is mandatory. By the act, you are directed to deduct 10% of its monthly earning are remitted to the fund because we also discussed the sources of funding. So it will be remitted back to the fund so that it can be used in terms of a revolving fund. So, everything. Now, if you are so communic communicated to but you refuse to do, then the person in charge of that is liable. You will hold responsible and you are liable to in conviction to two years imprisonment uh, to, to payment of two million or some years of imprisonment that I a month or years I cannot recall. But I'm sure you will pay two million as a fine. If you come up with a program without legal framework, that program will not see the light of the day. You understand? It was just some as a program. And once that program is gone, it's gone. Why do we have some established institution? because they are established by the Act of the National Assembly. And this is also a result of Act of National Assembly. What is the implication of that? Nobody can wake up and say, today I have killed it. You have to go back to hmm, National Assembly. Either I repeal it completely, or you amend it, or you repeal and reenact. So, and I'm sure that the National Assembly in the next 50 years and 70 years to come, they are representative of people and no members who are elected by his constituency genuinely will do something or abrogate what has been beneficial to his artists. So the difference here is that the previous one are programs that lack what? Legal framework. We are now dealing with a institutions. Because the fund now is what? 
is a body, unlike before, the act of the previously was a committee. Mm. Eh? And now we are dealing with what? A body of corporate entity that has perpetuity and they can be sued, they can sue and be sued. Each quarter, the firm must to publish in a national daily. Is there in the act? Their transaction, they have to meet quarterly and they have to also publish it in national daily. And they must also send a report, a copy of that report to Mr. President and also to both House of Representatives and the Senate. You understand? And they will scrutinize the dish. And it's also even the fund did not just leave it open, go and spend what you want. Certain logistics say peg it not exceed ten percent of what is in the fund. So there are a lot of internal mechanisms. Other than that, we have also external. The money has to be audited. And then you also have our watchdog, the financial anti crime institution that will also follow it up. All right, joining us live in the studio to give us more on this national mobilization is the National Mobilization uh, Officer of Education Rights Campaign, Adaramoye Michael. Mr. Adaramoye, it's nice to have you in the studio. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Um, interesting conversation. Uh, the student loan has been signed into law by the president. Um, but for, let me first ask you, when you first heard of it, what was your reaction to it? Well, uh, when the idea of the student loan uh, came up, for me, for, for exception, we uh, acknowledge it as uh, a, a, for another effort by the Nigerian Muslim class to further commercialize public education, to take it out of the reach of Nigerian students, as against what uh, the loan scheme is being positioned to to uh, cater for, which is to access ed uh, education. We we feel that in the reverse, it is going to uh, create more crisis for students in the, in, fact, in the education sector, and even beyond the education sector itself. Because we have to look at it clearly and critically. That's because uh, this itself goes beyond just the education sector. Because students who, who will be graduating, obviously, uh, will, be, will, be good, will be going into, into the society, which will mean that one, uh, someone uh, has a loan, has um, uh, millions of Nela uh, for around his neck as a loan. After uh, uh, I mean graduation, and then we, before, before I begin to ask, what is the quality of life to even expect from young graduates who will be benefiting from this uh, so-called loan, loan scheme? Say. So that from the, from the very inception, we've uh, looked at this loan critically and we've drew our conclusion, which is clear that this loan is safe, uh, is going to create crisis for students. It's going to create, create crisis for the, for, the, for the society at large because it, it, it means that government is attempting to hands off from funding the public education. And we've always mentioned that public education, uh, in fact, for, for me, provision of, for, of, of education is a function of the government, and government was not shy away from it. But what we've witnessed over the years is that government has been trying to shy away from their responsibility. And this idea of uh, loan, loan scheme itself it shows clearly how the, uh, for, for, uh, how the uh, Tinibu regime has taken further step in that uh, wrong uh, the, um, election of uh, try, uh, trying not to fund the education sector properly. Now, Mr. Michael, some Nigerians think um, this is a very bold move, but they are scared when it comes to the implementation of um, this um, scheme. What is your take with regards to this? Well, uh, like I said, there will be many uh, problems attached to this. Of course, and uh, what you've mentioned is even how to implement it. Because one, when the idea came up, what we first heard was that uh, um, 50 billion naira has been allocated for the loan scheme, I mean, for the first year. And then, and then, uh, and then the president, while presenting it at the parliament, said that uh, there's an additional uh, uh, 200 uh, billion for that too. So that we're going to even raise the question that will this fund even be enough to cater for all the students who are, who are interested in getting this loan. Because you look at millions of Nigerian students we have, and with the, with the reality that ever since this discussion of, of, on the loan scheme has started, mm -hmm. schools have, 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 have continued to jack up their fees. Just uh, some, 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 some months ago, 
the uh, College of Earth Sciences in Ohio increased their school fees from about one hundred thousand dollars to eight hundred thousand dollars. Which should which should mean that students who have I mean the uh, I mean on, on, for like before now when you are paying one fifty thousand dollars and you can take loan for that. Which now it means that you have to take loan for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Which which should mean that more students who have a uh, higher amount to take loan for. So that you then have the question that can that be safe? Uh, cater for all of these uh, students and those that cannot uh, meet the uh, loan. I mean, only because of one reason or the other, or even lack of funds or sufficient funds to cater for everyone. What what is going to be their fate? Are they still going to be faced with this uh, problem of uh, paying the same increased fees as those who have gotten the loan? So 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 so, so these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. But uh, uh, like I said earlier. There are many problems. For when you look at it, for, for the more you look at this loan scheme itself, the more you you going to look at more crisis in it. And the question of of uh, implementation, how do we? Uh, because now, aside the tuition fee, there's, for there's also a question of giving loan on a uh, upkeep of students. So how, how how do you even determine the amount to give as upkeep to students? Or so I mean, considering the level of solution we have in the country too, so that. Uh, that is the take that there will be crisis of implementation, and even aside that, even after you get it to, there are also a lot of other crisis attached to it. Okay, so you know, you, you've spoken a lot about what the challenges are, uh, why you think that this loan thing will not work. Maybe if we had this conversation when the president had signed the, the, the first one, maybe that could have you know, there could be more things to look at, you know, but. Now the president that the bottlenecks that the first one had has been removed. Let's say, for example, uh, you look at and the first one was the five hundred thousand naira threshold mm -hmm. by the parents of the applicants. applicants. You understand? Now in this case, it has been removed. That's number one. Number two is that the level the guarantor, which is of if the person is a civil servant, so uh, from I think from level eight, eight. to level twelve, mm -hmm. the guarantor part. Is also removed. Yes. So, if we say, if if you are saying that you don't see the possibility of how it it will work out, the president is saying that okay, in this case, while you are looking at these other challenges, let's remove the bottlenecks that these have. So, I think, don't you think that those bottlenecks can open up the space for people to opportunity. the opportunities for them to take the loan? And lastly. You talked about the fact that how do they even pay off the loans eventually? Don't forget, in the new one, there's always also the space of when the applicant has graduated, finished the NYSC, two years after, he or she will now be given the, the avenue to pay off the loan. I, don't you think all of this is also um, should be put into consideration why, why, why we look at all of these things? Oh well, uh, thank you. Because uh, when the loan first uh, came uh, came up, and we look at it critically in the education rights campaign, but well, some of these points you made that uh, some of these uh, those are conditions that were removed were things we've pointed out. In fact, when the loan came, uh, I mean, the idea came up, we had to look at it, and we came up with a pamphlet where we stated clearly ten reasons why the Tinubu student loan is a scam, and it is on on the basis of some of these uh, conditions attached to the loan that we feel that even if by chance, a student can even get this loan. <laughs> it is almost almost impossible. But now that some of these conditions have been removed, it is not because the government uh, was being kind or nice. It, it was because Nigerians spoke up against it. That how how will you say you want to give loan to students and then attach all of these conditions to it? It was the uh, voice and concern raised by Nigerians that made the presidency and those involved to have a rethink. And do that too. But now that these conditions have, have been removed, our major concern, because like, like I said earlier, we view uh, education as, as the responsibility of government, providing, and even the, 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 the constitution said it clearly too, that these are things the government, obligations that the government must also do to the citizens too. So that then, if uh, the uh, uh, president uh, is, is genuinely interested in engineers assessing education, we have made this point clear that there are means to which this can be done without placing the burden of debt on innocent students. And that is the point we are making. And that is why we are saying that this loan scheme 
even if it works, it's going to create crisis for anyone who is lucky to get uh, to uh, to uh, um, to uh, benefit from this uh, loan uh, loan scheme. So it's fine. It goes beyond just uh, removing the, the condition attached to it. Because we've, we've asked ourselves, is Nigeria too poor to uh, uh, give? Fine, fine. I mean, Nigerian students yeah. access to quality and affordable education. Because in, in fact, in all of these discussions, we've not even mentioned the quality of, 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 of education we'll be getting. Because everything has been on fees alone, how to get the education itself. But we've, we've asked even, is there, is, is there even provision to even make this thing quality? Because, I mean, if a uh, student then to be getting a loan for something, at least you should, you should be guaranteed of, 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 of a level of quality for me too. But, but like I said earlier, it goes beyond just removing these conditions too. The idea of a loan is safe, and it's what we've questioned. And when we came up with our, with our pamphlet last year, we gave the government alternative measures that instead of placing debt on students, there are ways to ensure that our Ukrainian sector is safe and function properly. And I will take you back to history. We've had in this country if a... Can you that in like 30 seconds? Is okay. it possible? I'm listening. Okay. We've had in this country a period where our, 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 our education sector was almost like the envy of all in Africa. We have, we even have students coming from, from other countries to even see that athletes benefit from what the engineers are enjoying. So we need to ask ourselves what has gone wrong from this, uh, in this period. Uh, when we had that, it was not because, 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 because there was a student loan at that point. No, it was because government was being responsible and giving enough funds to that sector to ensure that students can enjoy quality education at affordable price, almost at free price. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know Interesting that, conversation, Mr. Conversation. Adara that, Adara Moye Michael. Yeah, and he's very passionate about what, what uh, the student loan is. Thank you very much All for right. joining us on the show. You're yeah, welcome. All right, thank you. Now, the Ministry of Education says 2 million out of school children have been enrolled in basic school and Arabic literacy program with vocational training. The Minister of Education spoke at the Citizens and Stakeholders Engagement on Nigerian Education Sector Ministerial Deliverables in Abuja. There's more in this compilation. The Ministry of Education was handed over ministerial deliverables at the end of the cabinet retreats for ministers, presidential aides, permanent secretaries, and sub-government functionaries held in November 2023. It is with a view to ensure that ministries, departments, and agencies deliver on the presidential priorities of the renewed HOPE agenda for 2023 to 2027. <laughs> This stakeholders' engagement is in line with the number 23 of the presidential deliverables to initiate and implement quarterly citizens' and stakeholders' engagement sessions to communicate government activities and serve as feedback mechanism. As the ministers ruled out their achievements and plans in the past six months, they informed Nigerians that the ministry have been able to see to the enrollment of two million out-of-school children in basic schools and in Arabic literacy program with vocational training. One of the major programs of uh, the present administration to address problems of out-of-school. And uh, while the commission set up is still as uh, trying to settle down fully. The work has not stopped. The project on outdoor school is still ongoing. There are agencies of the ministry that are doing their own part to ensure that the problem is also addressed. In terms of our constructions, which is also a major thematic area of our school, we have paid much emphasis of recent to the innovation, to the construction of our vocational schools. So far, we have over 21 uh, schools that have been uh, completed, fully furnished, and that will be handed over to the state. Stakeholders take turn to ask questions and make recommendations that will help move the sector forward. Based on the economic reality of the day, probably the federal government should come up with a policy on how to cushion the effect, probably subside some of the fees. The way how to is to give security education to citizens. That citizens' education in the next couple of weeks will take off in all our decisions of learning. When live from Abuja returns, we'll be talking about, of course, the Senegal youngest president and, of course, uh, the Ike in Tariff. We'll be right back after this break. Life is 
politics. In Nigeria, almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play. Governance, legislative matters, the economy, security, foreign affairs, internal affairs. Have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in Nigeria. The players, the drama, chess piece moves. Be kept informed. Watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you. Watch politics on Sunday. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. And thanks for staying with us. Uh, the Chairman, Authority of Heads of State and Government of ECOWAS, President Bola Timimu, has reaffirmed his unwavering commitment to the aspirations of the ECOWAS community and fundamental objective of the regional body. President Tinubu spoke at the inauguration of the sixth legislature of the ECOWAS Parliament as he charged the newly sworn in members of the ECOWAS Parliament to ensure the economic prosperity of the region. There's more in this next piece. This is the first sitting of the sixth legislature called by President Bola Tinubu according to the powers vested on him and contained in the supplementary act of ECOWAS. This first meeting is made up of mostly newly elected members of parliament from the current 12 members of ECOWAS community. The first task, therefore, is for the new members to take their oath of office. The outgoing speaker recounts the achievements of the fifth legislature. We are also very intentional about parliamentary diplomacy and the benefits that will be derived from. So the grand aim of this legislature, we are in the Republic of Senegal on a parliamentary mediation, which together with the efforts of the authority completed into the Maros of the presidential election. Nigeria's president and chairman of the Authority of Heads of State and Government appeals to members to take seriously the unity and integration of the region. Our journey towards a future of peace and prosperity. We cannot succeed without the loyal contribution and hard work of our community's legislative agency. Furthermore, to realize the ECOWAS vision of 2050, we require greater involvement of the people in the decision-making process of the community. Please bear that in mind. That can only be achieved through their duly elected representatives who, being members of their national parliaments, are Conduit to the community parliament. We are here collectively to serve all the good and greater people of West Africa. Democracy must be accompanied by accountability that ensures the delivery of development, justice, and security to our people. As parliamentarians, your role in this process is fundamental. Our region faces serious political, economic, environmental, and security challenges. Even our collective community commitment to unity has been questioned. The role of the parliament is, therefore, more important than ever. The balance between executive, judicial, and legislative arms is critical for effective, responsive, and transparent 
governance. President Tinubu reminded members of the parliament of the importance of service to the about 400 million West African community they are representing, especially in the bid to realize the ECOWAS Vision 2050. We must ensure that cooperation among us is strengthened with a view to building a sense of common destiny and purpose. No one can do this for us. We are the ones to do it. Please take that seriously. In your legislative considerations and in your various interactions, it is very imperative that you take seriously that we have to build the economic prosperity of our region by ourselves. The inaugural meeting of the 6th legislature was attended by the Minister of the FCT, members of the diplomatic community and other dignitaries, PTC and. One of the agitation of the 5th legislature is enhanced powers for ECOWAS members of parliament. With the inauguration of the 6th legislature, hopefully this and more will be achieved in order to indeed achieve ECOWAS of the people where members of the parliament are representative of the community members. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja. Away from Nigeria to Faroe, Senegal, where you may not have heard of him, but a year ago, the 44-year-old Bashiru Dioma Ifaye is now the president of Senegal. A former task collector, who is now the youngest democratically elected president, was released from prison a week before his inauguration. Several African leaders, including President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, attended the ceremony in the new town of Diamniadio near the capital of Dakar. Other highlights of the event that took place in the city of Dakar revolved around the reactions over the newly sworn in president, Two Wives, who, as uh, we said, will both serve as first ladies. This is the first time a sitting president will have two first ladies in Africa. There's more in this report. It's a new down in Senegal as Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu joined other world leaders to attend the inauguration of President Basir Faye, who has just taken up the country's leadership from former President Marc Issaou. Senegal's fifth president was sworn in in a ceremony attended by foreign heads of state and government. Mr. Faye won more than 54% of votes in the 24th of March presidential election and was confirmed on the 30th of March by the Supreme Court as the country's next president. Among many obligations, President Faye is expected to put the Senegalese economy in order. President Bola Tinubu, who is the chairman of ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, was accompanied on the trip by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Yusuf Toga, and other senior government officials. He is expected back to the oh. country wait, anytime wait, 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 wait. soon. It is 110 years since the northern and southern protectorates were amalgamated to form Nigeria and 51 years since the creation of the National Youth Service Corps scheme. This next compilation takes a look at the NYC strategy of using cultural display to foster unity. The founding father of the National Youth Service Corps, General Yakubo Gowon, dreamt of a united and harmonious country. But the fault lines between Nigeria's ethnic groups seems to be more obvious with each election cycle. General Gowan's creation, the NYSC, is still working hard to fulfill his vision. Core members are at the fore of promoting inter-ethnic understanding, unity, and peaceful coexistence. The Cultural Day Carnival is one of the occasions that the NYSC uses to promote Nigeria's diverse cultures and nationalities. This is a celebration that turns strangers into friends. 
I would say it has been an eye opener event for me. You know, seeing people from different tribes, you know, we have been grouped into different parts, and um, you might be rep your plateau might be representing you, and you are not a Yoruba person. Your plateau might be representing Hausa, and you are not an Hausa person. But you are expected to give your all in all to the cannibal to bring out the beauty of that particular culture you are re representing. You see, Idoma dan dancing, Fulani dancing, see Fulani dancing, TV dance. That's the cultural integration in action. So the, it, 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 it helps to create more friendship, more understanding between the various tribes of Nigeria, and it will enable the participants to appreciate the culture of other people other than their own. Building bridges and breaking walls of distrust is a challenging task that requires the concerted effort of leaders and influences at various levels. These core members from different parts of the country are now ambassadors of one united, indivisible Nigeria. This will unify us, bringing different cultures to see the beauty and the diversity in them that will help us foster unity in Nigeria. So this should be encouraged. Before I came here, in fact, I never liked Igbo tribe, but NYFC has provided a platform for me to meet Igbo people, enjoy their tribe, and they are really nice people, and I'm proud to, to, to represent them today. About 1,500 core members celebrating the diverse culture and tradition in Nigeria. Beyond the singing and the dancing, the goal of the NYC and its core members is to promote integration and national unity and thereby fulfilling the vision of the founding fathers. Landry Adiemi, TVC News, Gobi. I'm back to the development in Senegal. Joining us to discuss this via Zoom on the show is Solomon Ogbole, a global affairs analyst. So, Mr. Solomon, the swearing in of 44 year old Bashiru Diomaye Faye is um, historic, especially in Africa. Tell us what you feel about this with African presidents being old and gray all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's always funny when you hear like um, people talking about African presidents as the older ones. Um, I'd like to say it's it's everywhere anyway. Like we see today's current president of the U.S. Um, that's always looking for his way out to the stage. But I still appreciate that we have um, the Cameroonian president to be um, really old and our own president for sure. Um, where you see memes on social media, Rocco Ages versus agent of days but this is really good really really good that we have a young person fronting the affairs of um, Senegal and I would um, encourage young people to do it's more to participate a lot more in politics it's still out. say that again That's oh one. yeah I thought there was like um, some network glitch or something so yeah um, so it is really good. I'm really impressed, especially by the fact that he's only come out of prison not too long ago, and then here he is being the president. So it's really good and quite motivating for the young people of the continent. Okay, so, so there was a drama that unfolded before his inauguration. Was he yeah. being in prison and just released a week before his swearing in? Uh, well, you said this is a story of some sort. Uh, what uh, that of the late Madiba Nelson Mandela had play once again, or you remember that of uh, Lucia Gombasanjo, who was also uh, in a, a, was in prison and became the president. I remember very well, and I would say it's great not only because he was a political prisoner, but because also um, prison is not an internal like eternal condemnation of who a person is. If you go to prison, it's just supposed to be correctional. It's a correctional facility to make you a better person, to come out and turn your life around and become something great and relevant for the society. So this is a really good example that um, going to prison doesn't mean you are rubbish or you, don't, you can't amount to anything in the society. So this is good. It also reestablishes the 
Nelson Mandela situation, Olisha Guno Passenger, or even Shea Usani that were all political prisoners. And now we can see that um, this is such a big inspiration for young Africans. Now, do you think he has what it takes to achieve success in Senegal in terms of economic development, youth employment, and so on? Yeah, you know, it's one thing to sell yourself to have to be the solution. Yet it's another different bull game to be actually the solution. From what we've seen so far, it shows that he has the willpower to do as much as needs to be done for the country. Um, but he set himself up for a very difficult task because um, his party is not even having the majority in the other sides of the government. So it might be really difficult to walk around the government to make something reasonable out of this his time in office. Um, first of all, the cost of living crisis in Senegal at the minute, the cost of living crisis is about to kill the living in Senegal. Um, so much about the whole system that needs to be um, revamped and to just work for this system, for the government of Senegal to make something really reasonable from his time in office. Okay, so on the last note, do you think that, you know, African can begin to look at the young part of where we now have young African leaders, you know, come to the fore, come to the ground and make things happen in the region? Absolutely, I would say yes, absolutely, because... Um, leadership is not giving, it's taking. You'd have to, would have to, as young people, would have to come out and really um, collect this leadership from um, the old African leaders that are not seeming to have a great understanding of what the world is saying right now as to the advancement in technology, AI, cryptocurrency, and so many transcendental, like, um, Heights, the world is really moving so quickly. So I would say it's a good call for young people to come out and join politics and really collect this leadership just the way Basiru Fahi has done for Senegal. Thank you very much, Mr. Solomon Ugbole, uh, Global Affairs Analyst, for joining us uh, via Zoom from the United Kingdom. Thank you very much. Let's take you through some big stories that made headlines in the week. The Economic and Financial Crime Commission has arranged Tegran Gambrian, uh, an executive of Binance Limited before the Federal High Court in Abuja. It was presented by EFCC operatives before Justice Emeka White. Mr. Gambrian and Nadim Anjawala arranged on a five-count charge bordering on money laundering and foreign exchange contravention to the tune of 35.4 uh, million dollars. Now the Nigerian Customs Service announces a 122.35% increase in its first quarter of 2024 revenue compared to the same period in 2023, claiming it generated 1.34 trillion naira between January and March this year. Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, Adewale Adeni, says the collection for the first quarter represents a substantial increase of 122.35% compared to the same period last year, where it's generated over 600 billion naira. Interesting. Uh, the naira has continued its gain against the United States dollar, appreciating both at the official foreign exchange and parallel markets to the delight of many Nigerians at the Nigerian autonomous uh, foreign exchange market. The Naira gained 16 Naira uh, or 1.2 percent as the dollar was quoted at 1 Naira 260, uh, of course, 1,262 uh, Naira. This means the local currency has started dollar supply push pushes a Naira to 1,262 to a dollar continue to improve streak against the grain with expectations of further appreciation. Now, manufacturers and organized labor have kicked against the federal government 240% hike in the tariff payable by electricity users enjoying a 20-hour power supply. They insisted on the electricity subsidy, warning, its, warning that its removal would send manufacturers out of business and worsen inflation. The Private Telecommunications and Communications Senior Staff Association of Nigeria suspended its planned strike 
which, is, uh, which was to begin on Thursday uh, in a statement signed by General Secretary Okonu Abdullah. The union said that the suspension was as a result of agreements reached where the subcontractors it had issues with. And outside Nigeria, a magnitude 6.0 earthquake struck off northeastern Japan's Fukushima region on Thursday, the Japan Meteorological Agency said. But not, no tsunami warning, rather, was issued. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries after the earthquake, whose epicenter had a depth of 40 kilometers and which was also felt in Tokyo. Interesting there, uh, of course. And it's time for sports. We have Jane in the house. Jane. Good morning, Demola. And uh, well, it's um, very exciting um, news that brought me to the studio this morning. And um, it's the Super Falcons um, getting uh, one leg advantage over the, their beta, not beta, but maybe long time rivals. I'd, banana, I'd, I'd, banana, I'd, I'd, I'd South Africa. I'd say yesterday's match was quite tough and it was a close call. Yeah, it was. Um, it wasn't as, as tough as you know many people anticipated uh, for so many reasons. So a lot of the South African players had been laid off due to injury. Their captain, Jerry Filo, is just returning and hasn't been very active. So they're not you know as fluid as you would expect um, a South African team to be against Nigeria in this long period. And I think also with how much the coach had refreshed the team. So you have the Falcons actually also playing better. So, I mean, they were, of, on, they were a bit of a surprise for the South Africans <laughs> they yesterday. The, the ball is in your court. Okay. All right, and nine-time African champions, Super Falcons of Nigeria, seeking qualification to the 2024 Paris Olympics qualifier, took on the current African champions, Banyana Banyana of South Africa, in Abuja. And we bring you this report. The Nigeria Super Falcons in South Africa's Banyana Banyana match is always a high-profile match, filled with expectations, passion and excitement. Nigerian football fans came in their numbers to support the home team. Falcons were in control for most of the game, but it was a 43rd minute penalty converted by Rashida Tajibade after Nokomatlu fouled Chimwendu Hezu in the box that separated both teams. Although the Super Falcons have a 1-0 win advantage going away for the second leg, coach Randy Waldrum and his charges understand that there is more work to be done in the return leg. I would, uh, I would agree. I, I thought we were a bit unfortunate not to have a two or three goal uh, victory tonight. And so overall, I thought we could control the game. Parts of the things we wanted to do offensively, we did. Uh, as I said in the last press conference, we still have to finish these opportunities. But, you know, now we're at this point where there's one match left. And the bottom line is we just need to go get a result at this point. Um, for me, I really think we're going to go to Paris. So uh, there's no for me to think we're going to lose. Or So I'm really looking forward to Paris. <laughs> Having conceded through a set piece in this fixture, the South Africans, led by the Siri Ellis, are confident they can turn things around. A penalty decided the, the match, but uh, the game is not over. I thought in the second half we raised our game a lot, created a few chances, uh, could have equalized, maybe could have got a penalty um, at the end against Jermaine, but uh, very proud of the team. Um, and we'll take it back to Pretoria. Uh, it's an advantage for us because we're going at home, familiar with the... Uh, uh, facilities, familiar with everything and I think from now on uh, I mean they scored with a penalty it's a set piece like uh, every game it was not from play so I think from us it's going back, uh, looking at the tactics and seeing how we can uh, change the favour for us. With this result the Nigeria Super Falcons leave to fight another day and that day is next week Tuesday in Pretoria, South Africa For the South Africans, they are very convinced that they can turn things around when they go back home to get this ticket to the Paris Olympics. Jane Francis Mweze, TVC News, Abuja. All right, interesting. Jane. Well, definitely, that's it all in sports. Okay, let's take through a bit of training stories on the world of entertainment. Gospel artist Mercy Chiwo and her husband, Pastor Blessed Izuchika, have taken legal action against five persons for criminal defamation, the magistrate court in Abuja has now put out a summons for the five defendants to appear before the court 
on April 23rd to address these allegations against the couple. This comes off the, attack, uh, off the back of a petition sent out to the Inspector General of Police by another popular gospel singer, Nasani Obasi, over the, uh, the same allegation of criminal defamation and cyber stalking against him on the same issue. This is coming barely a week after social media users concocted the vicious insinuations that Bassi is the biological father of the son of a fellow gospel singer. <clears throat> While Idris Okuneye, popularly known as Bob Risky, has pleaded guilty to the charge of Naira abuse and will still remain in custody until Tuesday after his arraignment and the, at the Federal High Court in Lagos. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had arrested and paraded the controversial cross-dresser on a six-count charge for alleged Naira abuse, mutilation and money laundering. Operators of the Lagos Journal Command of the EFCC have followed this up with a full-blown investigation for allegedly spraying Naira notes at an event last month. Other charges on mutilation and money laundering have been dropped by the anti-graft agency. And Nigerian superstar Davido has set the record straight after reports were faced on April 1st, alleging his arrest by Kenyan authorities for possession of narcotics. The singer took his social media platforms to address the false claims and reassure his fans of his safety. The rumors began swirling after a Kenyan media house reported that Davido had been apprehended while departing from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport following his private jet. However, the same media outlet later clarified the report was nothing more than an April Fool's Day prank. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nollywood actor Deyemi Okonlawo has revealed that when his wife was pregnant with their third child, he initially wished that it was a girl. In a recent sit down with Teju Babyface on the latest episode of the King of Talks podcast, Deyemi opened up about what being a father of three boys is like. I told my wife that I only have men inside me and I have the energy for them. Especially now that my wife is out of town with the baby and I am left with the boys. We have been giving each other buzz boosts, he said in between laughter. <laughs> I think what, what is more funnier to me this week is um, the bands. Which band do you belong, Jane? Which band do you fall? Well, I, I think a, a, someone B, dropped C. a link and said, check your band. And I think I'm on band A. I don't, uh, and for some reason... You're on band A. Yeah, for some reason, we have been A. having 20 hours of life. So I said, if they're going to keep it real, well, maybe you won't mind. I, 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 I don't think... We which band we, are you? Which, I don't even know the band I am. But I, mean, I think I'll, everyone is being forced <laughs> to be in on, on band, band A. A. <laughs> That's well, if they're going to give us the lights, well, I think many people don't mind. The, the point is not getting the light and still probably having to pay for banking. Oh, well, we hope whatever it is, the federal government will resolve that, especially with regards to the price of gas. And that's all we have for you this week on Live from Abuja. Do keep a date with us next week as we bring you exciting reports from entertainment, sports, and many, many other happenings in Nigeria. I am Habida Lawal. I am Ademola Lawrence. Francis. See you next week. <laughs>